Hey everyone and welcome back. So today we're going to actually be building and reviewing a Lego Animal Crossing set. And we're going to be taking a look at the biggest set of this first wave, which is Nook's Cranny and Rosie's House. Personally, I was really looking forward to the release of these sets because I played a ton of Animal Crossing when it came out. I really got back into Lego over the last six months, so it's great to mash the two things together. So now, let's not waste any more time, let's switch over to the top-down cam and get this thing rolling. Okay, so just before we get started, I do want to let you know I bought pretty much all of the Animal Crossing sets. Like, I've got all six sets that came out. So it is super important. If you guys want to see more of these LEGO videos, make sure that you hit that like button and you subscribe if you aren't already. Let me know in the comments down below that you want to see the other sets because... Basically, if not, I'm just going to build them off camera, but if you guys are really into this, you want to see them all, you want to get reviews of each one of the sets individually, let me know. I will do it over the next couple of weeks. Perfect. So just before we get started, let's take a quick look at the box. The set number, by the way, is 77050, and this one has 535 pieces. So we've got a nice view of the two homes here, so Nook's Cranny and Rosie's home. So now if we take a look at the back of the box, we actually get a quick view of the inside of the two homes and a few little shots, uh, close-ups of what you can do with the set once it's in action. So now I'm going to open up this box and we're going to be switching into the time lapse. So I'll see you when everything is up and built.
Okay, so now that we have everything up and built, before we actually get into the review section, let's take a quick overview on each one of the two houses separately, Nook's Cranny and Rosie's house, to look at all the little details that they've included, because there's actually quite a few interesting details here in, in this set. Okay, so let's start with Rosie's house. So I'm gonna tilt it up to the camera so that we can get a good overview of what it looks like detailed a quick side view and a quick rear view. I'm saying a quick rear view because we're going to do something in two seconds to take a better look. Now, the first really interesting thing to know about this set is it has a lot of modularity. Like all these little sections here, as I was building them, you can place them how you want on the set. So these things can come apart and you can place them in different places. So you could extend your house back here this pops in there you can place the tree back here if you would want basically you can set the setup in a modular fashion with a ton of options so what we're going to do is we're actually going to separate all these little sections because moving the set around with all of these attached uh, some of them can come flying off sometimes so we're going to just separate it and we're going to look at each part individually first let's take a quick look at the minifigure Honestly, I think it's a really good representation. This is one of the best minifigures from LEGO that I've seen in quite a while. And I'm also really glad that with this set, they went with the standard minifigure design and not something like they did for the Mario sets. But we'll get back to that when we talk about the review section. First of all, I just want to say I really find that the minifigures are nice. And actually, I think I... Although I prefer Tom Nook as a character, I think out of the two minifigures, I think Rosie came out looking better. But now let's set her aside. Now the tree is another really interesting design. And there's one thing that is very interesting. The bottom part of the tree here, I actually haven't seen this part before. Now I haven't been you know, building Legos consecutively for like the last 20 years. So I can't promise it's never been seen before, but I actually trying to find more parts like this on pick a brick on the Lego site. And they're actually not selling it separately, which is sort of a downside because if you ever do want to add more trees that you would build yourself, uh, you, if you want them all to match up, you'll need this part for the moment. I can't find it on pick a brick, but that's not the only thing that's special about the tree as the trees actually do come apart as well and they hide a little stick because you know when you start out the game or even further down when you shake the trees a stick can fall off well they've actually included that with a little cap here that pops off and you can drop a stick out of the tree i think it's a really interesting design and i've already seen that throughout the different sets you'll get versions with different fruit on the trees as well like cherries and so forth now we're not going to take a specific look at this one. This is really just a connecting piece. You've seen similar things in the Mario sets as well. Lastly, we have the little tea set here, and this is actually another really nice one. And because of the modularity, it's really fun because you can actually set it up in a bunch of places. If you collect all the sets, and I think this is really going to be one of those lines where it gets better the more sets you have, uh, There's you can really pop it in a ton of places. But I like it. There's a lot of detail. You have two cups, you have the teapot, you have a few little biscuits here, and you have the two seats. And lastly, getting to the house itself, well, once again, we have a few nice little details. For one, we've got a mailbox with a little letter here that you can pop in and out. Let me just get that out. It's pretty nice because it actually fits into the slot at the front. We also have a really nice uh, lamppost here. Honestly, I think it's a really nice design. It's simple, but it does the job. You've got the smokestack coming out of the chimney. And we also have uh, at the rear, we have quite a bit of furniture that can be reorganized in a ton of different ways. So basically you have a little table with a vase on it. You have a stove that within it actually has a little cupcake cooking. So it's actually pretty fun, pretty interesting. The bed is a really nice design here with the checkered cloth. Uh, 
On top of it, we have a little nightstand with a cup, we have a lounging chair, and we have a lamp. Now, you can actually reorganize all this in a bunch of different fashions. The instruction booklet itself gives you like four or five different placements that work, but you can also come up with your own. I re like I said, I really like the fact that the set has a ton of mod modularity and even they give you a choice of two different windows. So I put these windows on here, but you could actually use uh, these pink windows as well with a square design if you want. You can just pop these off, pop these on. So once again, a little bit of customization here. Lastly, it also comes with Rosie's bike. Uh, it's a little hard getting her actually on the bike because of the design of her tail but it actually works. So you can put Rosie on her bike and have her uh, driving along. It works. So now let's do the same. Let's do a quick overview of Nook's Cranny. Now I'm going to take this off because this is the only part that unfortunately doesn't stay in the, va in, the uh, in the watering can. So I'm just going to put it aside. But w if it's on the set and not moving, it actually works really nicely. But if you're moving the set around, it pops off. So first, let's take a quick look at Tom Nook. So Tom Nook is looking fine with his little shirt here. He even has his bell bag here on the side. He's wearing the birthday hat. And overall, it's a nice design. Once again, I'm not I'm really impressed with the minifigures. They are well made. And it's not that I don't like the design of Tom Nook, it's just I find it's outdone by Rosie. Rosie just has, I don't know, something about the expression on her face, something about the overall design. She just stands out a ton more. So now let's take a look at Nook's cranny itself. Once again, we have a lot of nice little surprises. So we have the message board. We can tilt it for at different angles. We also have here basically the box where you can put in your stuff at night. So when, when it's closed, if you want to get paid the next day, you can put it in. Once again, you pop the top off. There's a little carrot in there. So it's a nice little addition. It's a nice little attention to detail. I also really like that with the design on the windows, you can actually see the items inside the shop, just like inside in the game. So now let's pop it around and look at the details of what accessories we get inside. So you've got a guitar in the window. I'm not going to take the guitar off or the pail here because they are a little bit hard to get back into the perfect spot. But you could move them around. I just have big sausage fingers, so it's a little rougher for me. You've got a nice potted plant here. You've got the radio that we all generally, that they get pretty often in the game. And lastly, we have the counter here where you pay. But I think one of the nicest details here, and we'll take it off, is the bookcase. Uh, the bookcase, well, as you know, this is where you normally go to buy your different items. We have original printed bricks directly from the game. So we have some seeds for flowers. We have the uh, fish bait. And we even have a, a little DIY uh, card. Now these are all, to my knowledge, have never been printed outside of these sets. So these are a nice little touch once again. Lastly, we do have a barrel here where you have a shovel and a broom in it. These move around, so you do have to be careful when you're flopping this one around because those can go flying. But overall, Nook's Cranny looks okay. And we're going to talk about it in the review section. I think it is faithful to the design of the game. And what I'll do is I'll pop the game on screen so that you can see them side by side. But we're still going to talk about what I would have liked them to do with this set. Because don't get me wrong, I like the set. I just think there was maybe a different choice they could have made. Okay, so now we get to the actual review. What are my thoughts about this set? And I'm going to start off by saying I like the set. I even like the overall concept they're going with for these Animal Crossing sets. However, there are a few things I would have done differently. But before we get to the things I would have changed, let's talk what I really liked about this set. So first of all, I've already pointed to it, but the modularity I think is going to be one of the biggest selling points for LEGO fans out there or Animal Crossing fans because you can do a ton with these different sets. And especially if you're into mock building, I really think these sets are going to have a ton of potential to be thrown into different mock designs. Um, if I take one of a big Lego plate here, 
Now you're going to have to use your imagination because I didn't have time to tr throw something together. But imagine four or five of these lined up, a nice shoreline coming up, and then we can actually start building our island off of the mock designs. I mean, this is gonna have a ton, a ton of potential. Obviously, because of the size of the houses, you will need a lot of these plates to get an island going, but there is a really, really nice potential overall here. I think that this is, as I said, it's going to be a set with a lot of longevity in the, um, in the Lego universe because on top of it, as I pointed to earlier, the biggest problem with the Mario sets is the fact that they didn't go with the standard minifig designs. Because Mario just doesn't scale with any other Legos. However, these scale perfectly. So if you want to do a setup where Tom Nook meets Sonic the Hedgehog, if you just want to throw him into mock designs that you already have, this is going to scale perfectly with pretty much every general lego design out there mario and that's something that i sort of realized over time i stopped buying the general sets i still buy the exclusive the ones that are sort of like standalones like the huge bowser or the piranha plant but i'm going to stop buying the individual mario sets because they really live on an island on their own. There isn't much you can do with the sets outside of just within the Mario universe because none of the scaling works with any other Lego designs you would ever generally build. However, the fact that they went with general designs here for Animal Crossing means I think in the community these things are going to sell like hotcakes. I really think that for Lego fans out there, as I said earlier, and Nintendo fans, people are going to love these. And the best news of all, like, and this is a little design that I had pre-built here, just to show you what I mean, is you can even start adding your own sort of elements to a mock island. So I have a little oasis here that I, that I built up, and basically imagine this with Tom Nook sitting here, you've got Rosie, you know, smelling the flowers, spelling the flowers here. Like, basically, you can set these up with awesome mock designs. You can build your own parts of the island out, and you can basically add to these sets and do a ton. So, as I said, I think one of the biggest awesome parts of the set is because of the modular designs, the openness of these sets and the flexibility are, is probably the top thing that I love. And that's why I ended up picking up all of the sets because I started having tons of ideas going. Secondly, I do find that the designs are very faithful to the game. And they're maybe faithful almost to a flaw in some points. And that's where we're going to get to my review section of the part. What are my gripes with these sets? Well, first of all, I'm going to come out and say the pricing on these sets, it, 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 it's too high. This set has 535 pieces and it sells for $75. That's 14 cents a piece on average. That is extremely expensive for Legos. Like even considering that these are licensed Legos, it is still almost double the average price for Legos. Like, uh, I, generally expensive sets are somewhere around the 10 cents uh, a piece mark. This one at 14 is extremely expensive. And yes, we do have a lot of original printed pieces, but I mean, if you count them overall, there aren't enough in my opinion to justify that, that cost per part. So I would have liked to see this set come in a little bit cheaper. Also connected to that, I find the fact that they threw Nook's cranny in with Rosie's house a little odd. Because this is probably the most iconic building in Animal Crossing. Like, it's the one building that is always the same, and it is just iconic. Like, everyone's island has a Nook's cranny. Um, there is just no getting by it. And I really think that no, how they should have done it, and it, it's because I, I would have to pop the Isabel's um, house here, is that 
what I really think they should have done is they should have popped two villager houses in the double pack and Nook's Cranny should have been its own set and they should have put a little bit more into this design. It looks like the original Nook's Cranny, but they could have they could have gone a little bit more overboard with it. So rather than doing a $75 pack with a normal villager's house and Nook's Cranny and then a separate uh, $40 set with Isabel's house, what I would have done is I would have thrown the two villager houses together somewhere around the $60 mark, okay? And then I would have done a Nook's Cranny $50 set, but I would have gone like balls to the wall, adding, throwing everything I could at that set to make it like insanely, insanely attractive. Um, personally, that's what I would have done. So I'm still happy with what we got. I just think a little bit more could have been done. But overall, I don't think you'll be disappointed with this set. If the budget is an issue, I would maybe wait for a sale on these. And oddly enough, some of the smaller sets are better priced when we look at a, 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 a price per piece budget. But this set particularly is on the very expensive side. So overall, that is my takeaway. If you're a huge Animal Crossing fan and you can't wait, it's a good set to have. However, I do think this is going to be one of those lines, like I said, you're going to want to pick everything up or at least a lot of it so that you can actually build out a whole island. And that's something that, as I said earlier, if you guys are interested in seeing, let me know in the comments down below. If you want me to build a huge mock island, uh, you know, like over a few months on the channel from time to time with a, a video like every week or every two weeks, that is something we could do. Um, let me know in the comments down below. But overall, I think they are good sets. They Unfortunately, I would have liked to see the pricing a little bit better. And in my opinion, Nook's Cranny should have been a standalone set with really all the bells and whistles thrown in. It's still good. It just could have been a little bit better. So hopefully you liked this Lego build and review. Uh, I haven't done a lot of these yet on the channel, so if there's anything you would like to see change in the future, let me know as well in the comments down below. As usual, thank you so much all for watching. Don't forget on the way out to hit that like button. And as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.